For so our thanks and praise the Lord and thank God for another day that the Lord has given us life, health, and strength. We pray for the body of Christ. We pray for the Wilson uh, family, uh, lost us, uh, six of them yesterday. Brother Tyrone, his family, we pray for them. In Jesus' name, also, my first cousin, husband passed this morning, James Fuller, and going to be praying for that family. And just, there's so much going on, but we praise God for things as well as they are. A song says, Oh, perfect law, oh, oh, perfect love, all human thoughts transition. Lowly, we kneel in prayer before thy throne. That there may be the love which no no end in thee, no in thee. Whom thou forevermore dost join and one. O perfect life, be thou full as surety of tender charity and steadfast faith. O patient hope and quiet, bravery endure with childlike trust that fear no pain nor death. Grant them the joy which brought and which brightened earth by sorrow. Grant them the peace which calm all earthly problems, and to life they the glorious unknown morrow that dawn upon the eternal love and life. Amen. So, we don't know what holds, life holds, we don't know what tomorrow might hold, but one thing we do know, Jesus is in charge of everything in this world. So if you're going through a trial or a test, remember that God is in the test with you. He has not forsaken you, nor has he uh, left you alone. He shall be with you even to the end of the world. And we will just share a few moments about uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 9, well, Ezekiel 10, Ezekiel 10, from the glory of the Lord. Verse 10, Ezekiel 10, chapter. Then I looked at the hole in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim. There appeared over them as it was a cypress or a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spoke unto me, clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even upon the cherubim, and pull thy hand with coals of fire from between the cherubim, and scatter them all over the city. And, and he went in thy sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. When the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim and stood, he just stood there, talking about God's glory. He just stood there, the glory just stood there over there, thrashing toward the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the cloud was filled with brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the cherubim wings were heard even to the outside court, as the voice of the Almighty God when he spake. 
And it came to pass that when he had commanded the men clothed within linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels and from between the cherubim, then he went in and stood beside the wheel. And what cherubim stretched forth his hand from between the cherubim unto the fire that was between the cherubim, and took thereof and put it into the hands of him that were clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubim the form of a man's hands under their wings. And he looked, and behold, four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel of another cherub. And the appearance of the wheel was also colors of various stone. And as for their appearance, forehead one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides and turned not as they went, but to the place where they had looked. They followed, they turned not as they went. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels they forehead. As for wheels, it was crying unto them in my hearing own wheel. And every one that four faced and four faced was a four was a face of the cherubim. And the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim were lifted up, the living creatures that I saw by the rivers a charbon. And when the cherubim went, and wheels went by him, and when he when the cherubim lift up their wings to mount up the, from the earth, and the same wheel also turned not from the side of them. When they saw these stood, and when they had lift up these lift up themselves also, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the fraction of the house and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted up the wings and mounted up from the earth in the sight. When they went out, the wheels also went beside them, and every one stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them. This is the living creature that I saw upon the God of Israel by the rivers of Jarmal. And I knew that they were cherubim. Everyone had four face of peace, and everyone for wings and likeness of, of hands of a man were under their wings. And like of the face were the face which I saw by the rivers of Jarmal, their appearance and themselves. They went, everyone. Straightforward. And the first verse text says, As then the glory of the Lord went out of one brother from the church, and stood over the fashion of the house, and the house were filled with the clouds, and the courts were full of brightness of the Lord's glory. Talking about this, the kind of glory. Only God has that kind of glory. Now we speak of the glory. And God's definition, the phrase, the, the phrase, the glory of God is used several ways in the Bible. One, sometimes it describes a splendor and majesty of God in First, uh, first Chronicles 29 and 11. And at the best, one can see only appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Visions of the throne of God. In Ezekiel 126, in the scene of the glory of God, does make his uniqueness, his holiness. And I said 6, 1 and 3. And his trans transcending in Romans 11 and 36. Peter uses term that excellent glory 
as the name of God in 1 Peter 1 and 17. The glory of God also refers to the vision presence, the visual presence of God among his people. Sometimes called the Shekinah glory by the late Rabbi Shekinah. It is a Hebrew word meaning dwelling of God. Employed to describe a visual manifestation of God's presence and glory. Moses saw God's kind of glory in a pillar of cloud and fire, Exodus 13 and 21. Feel the tabernacle in Exodus 40 and 34. Guide Israel in the wilderness in Exodus 40, 36 and 38. And later, fill Solomon's temple in 2 Chronicles 71 and Kings 8, 11 and 13. More specifically, God dwell between the cherubim and the most holy place. 1 Samuel 4 and 4, 2 Samuel 6 and 2 and Psalm 8, 80 and 1. Ezekiel saw the glory of the Lord in the temple of God in Ezekiel 10 and 4. Rise from the, but the, and departed from the temple because of the, the rampant idolatry that was in uh, Israel. The, the color of this kind of glory is Jesus, who is the glory of God in human flesh. Jesus represented the glory of God in human flesh, came to dwell among us. John 1 and 4. He was God incarnate in the physical man. But when Jesus left this world, he didn't need this body anymore, so he dropped that name off. He didn't need that name anymore. He left for us to call him that name. And, and, and we call that name for strength. We call that name for power. He went back to glory. He did his job on earth. He set things in order. He positioned the church to have power and authority. But most times when God gives us authority and power, the enemy comes along and, and, and takes the power that God has left for us and, and use it for his own glory and try to say, you don't need this anymore. Uh, it don't make sense when you act the way you're acting. It don't make sense if you speak a tongue. God sent the tongue to signify that we have connection with heaven. It's a heavenly language. It's not a language you learn in seminary or in school or somebody talking. This is an interaction between you and God. You're a communicator with God through the Holy Spirit. Because you need your heavenly language, not an earthly language. That's why they were Pentecost. They had a heavenly language. And every language they spoke, every man all over the known world, they spoke the prophets of the that they spoke that day. And every man that was there understood what they were saying. That have a lady was transform, transition, and move people in the right direction. The shepherds of Bethlehem saw the glory of the Lord at Jesus' birth in Luke 2 and 9. The disciples saw it at Christ's transformation, transformation when it when was transfigured in Matthew 17 and 2. And Stephen saw it at the time of the martyr in 755. And the third uh, aspect of the glory of God is the spiritual presence and power, even through the heavenly declares the glory of the Lord in Psalm 90, 19 and 1. So, sisters and brothers, this thing called the shrine of glory is God's presence, God's dwelling, and God's heaven in a time of need and a time of trouble. Thank God for God's power and his anointing. Thank God for the heavenly language speaking our tongue that the Spirit of God give our utterance. Glory to God. We praise God for his manifestation. We praise God for his intervention in our lives and cause us to be moved in a heavenly direction. And third, the third aspect of the glory of God is his spiritual presence and power, even through the heavenly declare the glory of God. And the whole, hallelujah, and, and the whole earth is filled with his glory. And the brightness of God's majesty is not now visible evidence or uh, often going unnoticed. However, believers experience the glory of God and his presence and his nearness and his love and his rights and his manifestation through the power of the Holy Spirit, according to 2 Corinthians 3.18. So, this world system is trying to devalue the spirit of the speaking of the tongue and the movement of the Holy Spirit. They have got to involve in man's education, man's knowledge, 
they dismount and disrespect the power of God, and they make a mockery out of God's anointing. But I come to tell you, says of God, you don't know what you're messing with. That's God's anointing. If you don't understand it, leave it alone. Because you too eager to understand God's presence, you too eager to understand what God is doing in a, this world, and you don't know about the Sakana, His presence, you, you don't understand it, you step your side on the street and let them stay on the street. So the Bible speaks of a narrow way, and very few will find it. And it's a broad way of man needs destruction. So when you find the broad way in this world today, and people are falling dead because of disbelief and hardness of the heart. But I come to tell you, I'm praying for America. I'm praying for the churches of America because we're drifting away from the Chicago glory, God's presence. Your testimony, your preaching, all that will mean nothing if you don't have this kind of glory. That means God's presence in the house. Some of us give God praise for finally the Old Testament warned that any kind of adultery or encroachment on God's glory and bring reproach on God's name. Whenever God manifests himself as our Redeemer, then his name is glorified. Psalms 79 and 9. The time ministry of Christ on earth brought glory to the name of God in John 14 and 13. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're not believing today, if you understand the text today, ask God to give you his Shekinah, his presence of his glory, and teach you through your word, teach you, see to a church that preaches the fullness of the Bible, not some seminary thought. Not some psychology, a psychiatry, a mix of philosophy with the gospel, a new age movement. You have to get back to the word of God. You have to study this book and you have to understand God to give you an understanding of what he's saying. Because people are dying and going to hell because of their ignorance to the word of God. How can a man teach me in Philippians? If God, this man was talking to Philip. He's a unit, and he was a very wealthy man. He was eating at the festival at the Pentecost, but he was reading with his chariot, chariot and he remembered if you had a chariot, they mean you were wealthy, and he was and he, uh, in charge of the treasure. And when he was there, he was reading, but he didn't understand what he was reading. Philip, God had Philip to come back. That was a, a Philip, a, they say a, that he was a, a deacon, but a deacon in the Catholic Church. He just been a minister that had was man. But this was not the cases. This man was a man that God had chosen to preach the word of God. And he ran revivals and things happened. But he spoke, Do you understand what you read? He said, No, I, except some man teach me. So somebody needs to be taught today about the power and the glory of the God of glory. Speak in tongues and the spirit of God be relevant. It's just not the Pentecostal. It's not the church of God in Christ. It's not the one the oneness. It's for everybody. It's for all. Everybody to know who God is and his presence. But we want the, the menace. No, don't do this. I don't want to don't let your you know, denomination separate you from God. He said, I come from a heavenly language. You need to know through the quality of the word of God what the Bible is saying. Be blessed, be encouraged, remember. God loves you, and he don't want to be ignorant of his word. He came and he rejected them because of the ignorance. They didn't understand who he was. Ignorance not mean that you're stupid, it means that you don't know. You need to be taught. So anything that you're ignorant of, that means you don't understand it. And God will give you complete understanding of his word. I had to come to the full knowledge of the truth, and I was baptized the second time, like the book of Acts, these are these, these men. And, and, and that, that, that was baptized the second time. The first time in John's baptism, and the second time he was baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God for his word. Remember that heavenly language is for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Be blessed, the Lord. Be encouraged. Get your Bibles out. Begin to study. Begin to see Ezekiel 10 chapter. Study it. And start reading and study the word. And let God lead you down the road of holiness. In Jesus' name, amen.